All right, so here we need to talk about half reactions. Basically, half reactions are a way of breaking down and understanding redox reactions. One half reaction, our reduction half reaction, is going to show how many electrons are gained. Remember, reduction is gain, rig. And then the oil part, oxidation is loss. So our oxidation half reactions show how many electrons are lost. Another part that you might want to take note of that I know helps students is to know that if you're dealing with a reduction half reaction, you should see electrons written on the reactant side. And the reverse of that, if it's an oxidation half reaction, you should see electrons present on the product side. So let's analyze our first example and put all these little pieces together. So first step would be to assign oxidation numbers. So iron in this example is neutral, it's by itself, so I'll give it an oxidation number of zero. We have a copper cation and it has a plus two charge, it's by itself, so that gets an oxidation number of plus two. Iron, cation, plus two, and elemental copper, we'll do a zero because it's neutral. So we're looking at iron, iron went from zero to plus two. When you go in the positive direction on the number line, you lose electrons, you're losing negativity. So iron then, underwent oxidation. And then our copper went from plus two to zero. That means it must have gained electrons because it went to the left on the number line, it went down in value. So negative to gain, gained electrons. Or underwent reduction. All right, so now that we took some notes on it, let's start writing the half reaction. So since iron underwent oxidation, we expect electrons on the product side. Um, I find it a little bit easier though. First, we'll just write out the species. So iron, and you keep the same with the same. So solid iron is on the left side, so it stays on the left side. And then you're gonna turn it into iron two plus. And that's one half reaction. We need to put the electrons in. But the other half reaction is going to be what's going on with the copper. So we have copper 2 plus goes to um, solid copper over there, elemental copper. So same side, keep the sides the same, but also put the same um, element with the same thing. Like So iron stays with iron and copper stays with copper when you write your half reaction. And so what we need to do at this point, we have a zero and a plus two. We know it went, it went under oxidation, so that means it lost electrons. Electrons are on the product side, and you need to indicate how many electrons. So here it lost two electrons. Copper went from plus two to zero. It gained electrons. And so since it was gaining electrons, we want to write those electrons on the reactant side. At the end of the day, what you're trying to do when you're writing these and adding the electrons is balancing the charge. So earlier we said that this has a charge of zero. This has a charge of plus two. Well, zero, we think of this as an equal sign in the middle. Zero and plus two are not equal. But by adding these two electrons, right, this is a negative one, but we can do negative one times two. Now, this side is equal to zero, and if we add up these two things, then that side is equal to zero. We see this similar dynamic at play with the copper. Two times negative one is negative two. We got a plus two, and so these add up to zero. And then we have a zero on that side as well. Looking at more examples, we're going to do them the same way. First, let's find oxidation numbers. 
So we have a zero here, because even though it's diatomic, it's neutral and it's just one thing. You ignore your coefficients when you're assigning oxidation numbers. So we'll do a negative one here. Neutral by itself, zero. And then we have another negative one on the chloride. So we want to look at who's undergoing oxidation and who's undergoing reduction. So we can write those half reactions. So chlorine went from zero to negative one. Chlorine gained electrons. So that means that we can write Cl2 and Cl minus as the skeleton for a reduction half reaction. Oxidation, well, iodide went from negative one and then became diatomic iodine with a charge of zero. It moved in the positive direction on the number line. So that means it lost electrons or underwent oxidation. So I'll do my skeleton for that as well. So I minus goes to I2. So this example has a little bit more going on than the previous example. First, we have these twos. And we need to think about, well, where did those twos come from? The half reactions need to be balanced for charge and for element. So this is diatomic. This is 2i. So I'm going to put a 2 here um, so that it's balanced in that regard. Uh, same thing over here. This is diatomic. There's two chlorines. So I'm going to have to put a 2 over there. So now if we're looking at charges, if we're trying to figure out what's going to go on with the electrons. Oxidation, I know I need to put electrons on the product side. And for reduction, I know those electrons belong on the reactant side. The question is how many electrons? So this is our charge and not our oxidation numbers. So we have 2 times negative 1. That gives us a negative 2 charge on that side. This has a charge of 0. And right now we just have one electron which has a charge of negative 1. And as you can see, negative 2 is not going to equal negative 1. However, if we put a 2 out front, then we can update this. 2 times negative 1 gives us a negative 2. And then we're balanced for charge, and we place the right number of electrons into our oxidation half reaction. I'll do a similar analysis of charge on this one. So we have 0, negative 1. And 2 times negative 1, I get a negative 2. So if I throw a 2 into here, then 0 minus 2, and this arrow is like an equal sign, equals negative 2. And now it's balanced. Letter C has even more going on, but we're going to start the same way. Let's start with assigning our oxidation numbers. So I'll do a 0 on my sodium, because it's neutral and by itself, I'm ignoring the coefficient, a zero on the diatomic chlorine, and then I'll split this one in half, and I can do a negative one on my chlorine, and a plus one on my sodium. I'm ignoring the two there. And so those are my oxidation numbers. Using that information, I see sodium went from zero to plus one. That tells me that sodium underwent oxidation. However, in the past, the elements have been separate from one another. So when we separated them even further to write our half reactions, um, it wasn't a big deal. Here, the sodium and the chloride are together. We're going to have to assume that it's aqueous. And then we can do Na plus and Cl minus for our half reaction. So we'll do Na going to Na plus and Cl2, that's going to be our reduction because it went from 0 to negative 1. 
going to chloride. The oxidation will have electrons on the product side. And the reduction will have electrons on the reactant side. Now I need to check my charges. I need to check that it's balanced for charge, but also balanced for elements. So let's do both of those. Here we have sodium with a charge of zero. This is a charge of plus one. And this is a charge of minus one. So zero equals, if I add those together, plus one and minus one, that gives zero. So I have a zero on the left, on the left, and a zero on the right, and I'm happy with that. Here I have a zero, a minus one, and a negative one. So negative one equals negative one. The reaction is arrows kind of like an equal sign. Happy with that as well. However, this is diatomic chlorine, and this is just a single chloride ion. It's not balanced for elements. So let me put a two there. So now I have two chlorines on this side and two chlorines on that side. Well, that messes up the charge. Two times negative one now is going to give us negative two. We're going to have to fix that by adding a two in front of our electron. So now we can do two times negative one and get a negative two. So now we got negative two equals negative two. So it's balanced. Both of our half reactions are balanced for charge and they're balanced for elements. The third thing we need to check, and it hasn't been an issue up to this point, but we need to check always that the number of electrons lost by one half reaction is equal to the number of electrons gained by the other half reaction. So here sodium is losing one electron. But the chlorine is gaining two electrons. That's not going to work out. The electrons need to go somewhere, and they need to be equal to each other. So when you're dealing with that situation, you need to multiply the whole thing by some number, some coefficient that's going to make them equal. So here I need to put a 2. So everybody's going to get a 2. So multiply the entire thing by 2. And I'll update my charges as well. So that still stays at a zero, but now I got two times plus one. So this turns into a plus two, two times negative one. So this turns into a negative two. It's still zero equals zero, but now the two electrons here are equal to the two electrons here, which is also a requirement of writing our half reaction. Alrighty, so two more examples for you to practice. First, oxidation numbers. So we'll do zero, plus two, plus two, and zero. That tells us that magnesium underwent oxidation because it lost electrons. When you undergo oxidation, you should have electrons on the product side. Iron underwent reduction. So for iron, we need electrons on the reactant side. We don't have any diatomic elements here, so there's no issues with balancing. Mag one magnesium, one magnesium, one iron, one iron. Next, we need to check the charges. So we have a zero, a plus two, and this is a minus one. That's not going to work. So if I put a two here, because magnesium lost two electrons, then this will turn into a minus two, and I'm balanced for charge as well. Plus two, negative one, zero. Those aren't equal. Iron gained two electrons, so I need to represent that, put the two here, and then this becomes a negative two. Add those up, I get zero equal to zero. The last thing, what we saw in problem C, is we want the amount gained equal to the amount lost, and that just worked itself out here. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, but just always check.
All right, last example. We'll do a plus 2 for the oxidation number. A 0, a plus 2, and a 0. And you might be wondering, why am I making such a big deal about the distinction between the oxidation number and the charge? It seems like it's the same thing. We're working with a select group of beginning examples, so it is one and the same in our examples here for the most part. And the stuff that you'll see on a quiz or a test, the oxidation number and the charge are the same. However, as you continue in chemistry, the problems get a lot more complicated and you'll see where the oxidation number and the charge are not going to be the same thing. So it's important to develop good habits and good notation now and figure out something if the circling isn't working for you, figure out something so that you know here I'm talking about an oxidation number and here I'm talking about the charge. All right, so oxidation, let's see who's undergoing oxidation. It looks like that's going to be the tin, because tin went from being an oxidation of number of zero to an oxidation number of plus two. That tells me that tin lost two electrons. We could just, if you're seeing this, you could just put the two electrons in at that point. If it's zero plus two, we lost two. Copper underwent reduction. Copper started as a plus two. Gained two electrons, so I need it to be on the reactant side. And turned into elemental copper on the other side. So plus two over here, single copper over here, single neutral. I'm going to check the charges anyway. So I have zero plus two. And minus 2, 0 equals 0. Plus 2, minus 2, that's a 0. And that equals the 0 over there. Plus 2, it gained 2 electrons. And here it lost 2 electrons. So we have the 2 moles of electrons transferred. The two numbers are equal and we're done.